It's pretty. Yeah. Why does that light keep turning off? I don't know. Hello everyone and welcome! Welcome to Geek Academy channel, I'm your detective host Igor and today I want to talk to you about the electricity topic in Fromville. This is something that kind of bugs me, because it got a lot of attention, a lot of focus on season 1 and it's kind of left out right now in season 2 and 3. This is not gonna be one of my usual videos when there's a lot like screenshots and we're going one by one. This is just basically some sort of an observation that I had after watching those seasons many, many times and some conclusions and mainly some questions that I wanna share with you. So, but before we begin as usual, I want to thank everyone who supports me on Patreon and here on YouTube. Your donations is what make this channel possible. So, let's start thinking about it. We know that there is an electricity in the town of Fromville. It's not something magical. It's not something just there. It has some kind of physical presence. I'm going to explain myself. First of all, think about it. Like when Jay discovered how to exactly transfer the electricity from the wires to the other electric things in this town, it means that there is some electricity that can be transferred. Which means that no matter what's going on with the outlets or the wires, what comes out here is the electricity that lights the bulb. Came here in the back of someone's car. Which means that by all accounts, this item is completely useless here in our lovely little hamlet. Go ahead. But if we take the ends of the wire, fix it to the socket, the very place to which actual bona fide electricity is somehow being delivered. Let me screw a little light bulb here back in. Whoa! Ah, you see? With enough lamps and enough wire, we could turn Colony House into a giant battery. I'm sure you would have figured it out eventually. <clears throat> if it was like some sort of a magical place or, you know, like a hologram, whatever it is, like some kind of a matrix, and it was designed just to provide electricity for the lamps, so people will have light during the night, it would stay there. But since Jade knew how to utilize it for his own benefit, it means it's there, it has a presence. Okay, so it's not only that, even though all the cables are going to the caves and they're not really uh, connected to anything, we know that there is an electricity. But the other thing, which is way more important in my opinion, this is the first time we are seeing the flickering light scene. Christy, you here? Just look at the angle of the camera, like it's not following Boyd, it's static just for the purpose of showing us the flickering lights. Now this is episode 6, and another thing that happens in episode 6, which is kinda important, is Jade's vision, you know, when he's been attacked by a civil war soldier and then he's being saved by the Galadriel light, as I call it, like, and then he sees Jim. Hey. Hey. So whatever it is, it's not real. No, in season one, there is another interaction like that, like uh, in episode nine, when Jim helps his family to go dig up the hole. Once again, look at the camera, how it works. If this is not emphasizing, please look, please, at the flickering lights, I don't know what else is, okay? And the scene after that, just right after that, is Boyd and Sarah being dragged through the woods and then being rescued once again by some kind of a Galadriel light, you know, magical, angelic light that saves them from whatever was attacking them. So what kind of conclusions can you come up with here from all of the scenes? First of all, there is an electricity. It has some sort of a finite resource here, like if you have flickering lights, it's either a supernatural episode and there are ghosts nearby, which can also be a possibility, obviously, or it means there is a finite amount of resources and finite amount of energy that can be produced for this place and as soon as something else 
uses way more energy than it usually does, then there's not enough energy for the rest of electronic supplies in the town. Now, once again, I can be wrong. This is not one of those videos when like, I discovered the truth, please subscribe, whatever. I, I don't want to like send disrespect to my colleagues in YouTube, but if you're doing those kind of a tabloid videos, you kind of give this TV show a bad name and I think you can do better than that. But this is just my opinion. Anyway, like another conclusion that I think we can come up to here is that this source this energy consumer that can create this kind of effect of flickering lights is probably the lighthouse. Because what else can produce this strong, immersive light that saved both Jim and Boyd and Sarah? This is the only big source of light that we are seeing here in this TV show. This is the lighthouse. And it's obviously some kind of a magical, mystical lighthouse that has way more properties than the regular lighthouses that we have in our world. So if this was the lighthouse and it was used in order to save Jim and in order to save Sarah and Boyd, maybe this is also something that is being used to spy on everybody here. This is how Marty knew everything that happened with Boyd and his wife. And the monsters know exactly what happens with everybody because through the power of the lighthouse, they are able to watch after everybody. Like this is a theory. Okay, this is a stretch already. I know I'm already not basing this only on the facts and on the observations. So I'm kind of fantasizing here a little bit. I'm kind of like, you know, winging it, but bear with me. I may have some other explanations. So what do we know about the lighthouse? The boy in white is there. Is he the one who controls this place? If yes, why Tabitha did hear the Ankui children sound when she first arrived to this place? Was it a hallucination that was sent to her by the boy in white or is it something else? If he is the one in control, it means he knows everything, he's the one watching after everybody. And it kind of makes sense. You remember when Victor told uh, Tabitha when she just arrived to the caves that the boy in white sent him, he knew exactly uh, how to basically navigate through the caves so the monsters won't be able to catch Victor. So maybe it kind of makes sense. But there is another interesting thing here in Thronville that kind of connects to electric uh, electricity and all kind of uh, electric appliances. And I'm obviously talking about the music boxes. Okay, this is something that kind of random here in this place. It's kind of random when they turn on, when they turn off. Also, it can be explained by some kind of an electricity malfunction, just like the radio finding sometimes some kind of a static. But the music boxes are not really that random because we've seen a couple of times that maybe, maybe, maybe they're not really random, they're way more deliberate. Like the biggest sign of them all is when Boyd was asking his wife if he should go to the woods to look for the answers in season one. And he was asking for a sign and suddenly he got this song, If I Had a Boat, uh, blowing through the music box for him in the diner. I'll be down. I mean, this is obviously like the biggest sign anyone can get. He understands that this is his, uh, you know, like green light to go and search for answers. But this is not the only time that it kind of, you know, like related to what happens. In, I think, episode four, when Jim and Tabitha are talking about, uh, you know, their family, they've been arguing for the whole episode. They kind of been in each other's throat and they're sitting, not looking at each other. And suddenly the music box uh, blasts a song, blue song by Joey Mitchell, I think. And this is actually their song. It's something that reminds them of the best years together. And they're actually healing after that. We can see that they're warming up towards each other like in the time we are seeing it, this is happens in front of our eyes. So it works. It looks like somebody is deliberately doing that in order to achieve some kind of a goal. It's summer in Texas. I'm sorry. Now, both of those moments were kind of logical and it felt deliberate and motivated by logical desires like whatever power controls this place they wanted to boy to go out so probably he will go and find martin and get the worms and so on and so on and so on 
Jim and uh, Tabitha needed the healing because I don't know why but maybe because you know once again this place kind of helps you heal it gives you hope so eventually when it crushes it you feel way more pain but now when we go in already through season 3 every time music box is turned on it kind of feels like a very very dark humor I mean, look, first of all, it felt out of the place, completely out of the place, when Kenny just discovered the news about his mom's death and the music box blasted celebration star. I mean, this is if somebody is doing that, somebody is watching everybody and actually turns celebration why this guy mourns the loss of his mom just a couple of weeks after he buried his father that's not even dark humor this is like i mean beyond that but then we had the last episode when uh, acosta and boyd are uh, sorry acosta and kenny are arguing and once again she's like you know she's behaving like a like a child like an annoying brat child who's like nah, 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 you know i'm gonna be blah 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 whatever and suddenly the music book blessed oh child things are gonna get easier you know the song of course once again it feels very condescending and humoristic in a dark way in a very dark way but very like oh, calm down child or oh, here okay i'm gonna figure that And then it kind of hit me. I mean, we know about somebody who is funny. Like the only character that's been portrayed like a funny guy. Everybody's talking about him like a funny guy. Victor remembering here as a funny guy who was used to make everybody laugh is Christopher. And he's obviously an important character. I don't know how he can be alive. But if he is, it kind of seems logical to me that he's the one who controls those music box. And he's kind of trolling our characters, make himself laugh. It kind of feels like maybe once again, maybe it's a big stretch. You know what? It's not a maybe, it's a big stretch. But this is something that came to my mind and I wanted to share with you because once again, if this is really Christopher and Christopher has some kind of a control over the lighthouse, it means that the voice Jim heard in the end of season one maybe also belonged to him because he knows how to control the uh, lighthouse and if the lighthouse is actually responsible for all the electricity in this place he also know how to turn on the music box and he also was there to save Boyd and, uh, and Sarah and also was there to save Jade because once again he is not the main antagonist, he's not the main villain, he's not the big bad but he's probably doing something to uh, work this place as it's supposed to be worked. Sorry, what? Jim Matthews. Who is this? Your wife shouldn't be digging that hole, Jim. So this is just my train of thoughts. I wanted to share it with you. As you know, this is not usually what I do. I usually analyze and just share with you some information. Here I wanted to share the theory that is in my mind and I really wanna like hear your thoughts about it. And especially something that kind of bugs me the most is what happened in season two and season three. They didn't reference the flickering lights at all. Like no more flickering lights, no more lighthouse or whatever. This uh, strong, angelic kind of Galadriel kind of light is not shown to us anymore. Is this something that creators completely forgot? Was that there just to be there? Or this is some kind of a storyline that's gonna come back to us maybe in season four or maybe in season five. I don't know if it's the former, if it's the first, I'm a bit worried because it means that the creators don't really have a plan and I really hope it's the second. And I would love to know what you think about it, like do you think they have a plan? Do you think they just, you know, like they don't come back to this because they know exactly where to bring it back? Also what do you think about my theory, do you think it has some kind of a merit? Can it actually happen or you think I'm completely delusional? Anyway, whatever your stance on it, like, I would love to read also your train of thought, like, your logic behind whatever you think. And so please write me comments because I enjoy reading them. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I wish you a great Friday. Have fun during this weekend and I see you on the next one. Bye!